Blame in the flood. Pros and cons. Alright, so I've been playing the Flame in the Flood on Nintendo Switch, a game developed by an independent studio named The Molasses Flood. In this video I'll go through some pros and cons and if it's worth picking up. Please make sure to subscribe and if you enjoyed, push the like button. Now, if you're into survival games, this one might interest you since it focuses on how to stay alive, like avoid getting pummeled by boars, avoiding getting bitten by venomous snakes, or simply drown by crashing your raft into rocks. Simple mistakes I made several times. Anyway, let's get into it. Pros and cons of the flame in the flood. In a post-apocalyptic world, you find yourself alone on an abandoned island. And as the country around is flooded, you are left out to your own fate. You sit down by the fire and notice your radio is transmitting a signal. Perhaps it is a sign someone else is still out there. And together with your loyal dog you decide to set sail to try to find out what is the purpose of the signal. It could be your only hope of survival. I find this story to be quite exciting actually. I had no idea what I was facing as a venture into the unknown. A lack of friendly NPCs really helps to create a certain atmosphere. Being alone most of the time is actually fine and adds value to the overall experience. Occasionally, it's possible to encounter a few survivors. They sometimes offer you some items that may help you on your quest, or they just want to trade. Like this good old dame named Lady Cockrow. Isn't she a lovely one wearing night vision goggles and a badass rival? But since NPC shows up on random islands, I usually sail past them unfortunately. Unless I visit every single island, which is merely impossible to do. All in all, the story isn't particularly convoluted, in fact not much is explained at all. Except you know that you are all on your own trying to survive in the wilderness, picking up some hints now and then. In conclusion, the plot kept me motivated to keep on playing. We know by today's standards that a lot of games are littered with different tutorials. Sometimes they are necessary so the players get a good understanding about different mechanics tied to the game. However, some game developers take tutorials into the extremes. For example, as you learn a new ability, the game pauses and you're forced into a lengthy introduction on how to use a new skill. It's simply ridiculous and outright boring. As far as this game goes, the developers solved it pretty good actually. Reason is, they made tutorials optional. Yes, optional. It's not necessary to have to sit through a dozen of introductions each time you start up a new game. And in my opinion, that is how most games should be designed. If you need, you should be offered the opportunity to learn and contrary, if you just want to play without getting interrupted, it should be possible to do so. And once you start up the flame in the flood, you will notice a couple of readable boards that offer some basic information. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. If you don't want a tutorial, don't bother reading them and just move along. I had been playing for a couple of hours, collecting materials and gathering food and water. I was quite satisfied since I knew this was a good run. As my raft approached a new island, I had no idea what was coming for me. Day turned to night, and then... Out of nowhere this big bad wolf pops up, ready to feast on some man flesh. The creature meant serious business, attacking me several times and I was badly hurt due to laceration and exhaustion. My fate was sealed. Dead. I had traveled a long way, but now I had to restart from last checkpoint. Which basically meant go back a crazy amount and collect what's been lost. Another hour of farming. I mean, this is some proper bullshit. Why? Why does it have to be so goddamn punishing? It makes no sense unless it's because someone wants to annoy me, really. 
I really think they should have added a few more checkpoints so you don't have to redo everything. You can play for a long time without taking any damage, then BAM! You get hit once or twice, dead. Restart what you did several hours ago. Seriously, I call this one bullshit. No fun with a lack of checkpoints. A major part of your time is spent collecting materials, which are used for crafting a variety of stuff. Things you find can be combined and crafted into traps, medical supplies, different sorts of food, clothes, or purified water. However, soon enough you will reach the limit of your bag capacity and an expansion is required. You only got 12 free slots at your disposal, which means you have to rely on your dog and raft to offer some extra space. That's why I recommend you to expand your inventory ASAP, because you will need the extra room. But more space does not come for free, and this is where the game becomes frustrating. In order to create pouches, which each one expands your inventory by 4, you will need to find 4 cat's tails and turn them into braided cords. Then you must find 4 saplings, combine them with the cords to make 2 traps. Oh, I almost forgot. Of course, you need a stone knife as well, which is made out of flint. Now, it is possible to use the traps to hunt rabbits, but did you really think it would be that easy? Of course not. Rabbits can only be found during daytime, so if it just turned dark, you gotta sit and wait for a few minutes, unless you create a campfire or find somewhere else to sleep, then you can speed forward. Anyway, so let us get us damn rabbits. I deploy my traps, then I hide so the rabbits won't be scared, come back to collect, but they just turned to night, so rabbits are in their hole sleeping. Gotta be kidding me. Alright, I might as well hit a sack as well. This time for sure, there will be no mercy upon them rabbits. Yep, here we go. Finally, I can craft one pouch. Congratulations on another measly four slots. By the way, you also need a stitching kit, or no pouches. It is quite a demanding task to just expand the inventory, but it is necessary if you want to get any further. Of course, materials are RNG, so don't expect to find what you need when you need it. More likely are you will find a lot of other stuff used for other things, but can't be stored due to your already filled inventory. The lack of backspace really makes this game so much harder and forces you to considerate what you keep and what you throw away. Items and inventory makes this game a lot more challenging, but not necessarily any better. So I have been playing this game several times and actually I've only been encountering a few bugs. Worst was probably this one, where the character refuses to move. It's stuck in place and my pro controller does not respond. Solution? Yeah, you guessed it. Restart the game. All in all, the game runs pretty smooth, in my opinion. A few bugs, but no big deal with really. it. To be honest, the basic raft sucks and should be upgraded. The lake is dangerous and maneuvering through rocks and stones can be complicated as long as the raft lacks a better steering mechanism. I can't even count how many times I've been drowning due to bad raft control. So make sure to get a rudder as quick as possible. It would be much easier to avoid crashes, but also simpler to reach new islands that you previously only sailed past. This means that an upgraded raft makes it possible to find more necessary items. Find a raft schematic and craft a framework and one hardware. Enter a shipyard and the rudder is all yours. Each time you face a wolf, you either need to use a spare trap or a tainted bite. You probably don't want to use traps since they consume a lot of materials. It is better to use a tainted bite and why so? Well, if you time it correctly, you can deploy it and pick it up again before the wolf chews it up. You must be quite fast and react, otherwise the wolf will catch the bite and consume it. Don't want that to happen. 
By using this method you can get rid of several wolves at once using only one bite. Save some backspace and never have to worry about wolves being a threat. I really do enjoy games where you start off with two empty hands and slowly turn the character into something that can withstand the challenges coming ahead. In the beginning this game may seem to be quite complicated, but as you learn how to counter enemies, craft items, how to manage your inventory and so on, it's a pretty fun journey actually. And as you understand the basics, you should probably be able to finish it in one go, it usually takes a couple of hours. If you want to fetch this game, you can do so in the Nintendo eShop, I've seen it on a sale for 4 bucks. There was also a physical release, but it's fairly rare and costs a lot more. Anyway, I definitely recommend it for what it's worth, a good indie game.